congratulations. What did you bring here today? Uh, this is a, a 1969 Di Tommaso Mangusta. Mm -hmm. It's a car that I've owned since 1969. It's a Giugiaro design mid-engine coupe. Uh, he was freelancing at the time and he did the, decided to uh, do a companion car to a Bizzarini sedan that he had done for one of the Bizzarini brothers and so he proposed uh, this mid-engine coupe and uh, that was, uh, he took that to Ghia, Bizzarini turned it down but they were so excited about the design that they made a fiberglass model. Shortly after, Di Tommaso and his brother-in-laws, two brother-in-laws, bought Ghia. And Di Tommaso had, from his business, a chassis that was no longer needed that he had worked and developed with Carroll Shelby. So he immediately uh, put the chassis and the car into the Turin show four months later and declared to the world that he was going to build a car. And so they proceeded then to develop the car and about a year later started production. So this car I've had since 1969. Is this unique? This is the only car, only, uh, they built 401 uh, Mongoostas. Uh, all were built with Ford engines. This is the only one built with a Corvette engine. Bill Mitchell wanted to buy one. He didn't want a Ford engine. He Tommaso said, send me whatever you have, whatever you want, and I'll put it in. And uh, he came back home, talked to, to uh, Duntoff, and uh, a good, uh, his uh, assistant, Doug Patterson, uh, worked with the Chevy engineers. They built an engine in Chevrolet R&D and sent it to Italy and uh, it was built into the car. So it's quite uh, unique and uh, notorious uh, on the internet. internet. But, uh, tell me about the engine. What, what, uh, what the en the in engine there? originally was a what's called an L79. It was a 327 with 375 uh, horsepower. And when they built the engine, they put some uh, experimental heads on it that they had. And the compression was extremely high. So after seven or eight years, I couldn't time it, start it, drive it, because the, the high, high uh, octane fuel was going away. And so uh, a little a few years later, uh, I had the engine redone. We lowered the compression, but changed the crankshaft so instead of being a 327, it's now a 350. Let's take a look over here. You've got uh, one of the wings open here. <coughs> so what are we looking at here? Well, this is uh, uh, the la the layout is such. The engine is. Excuse me. Do you have anything to do with this? The, the engine is uh, at the front. Behind it directly is a, a ZF five-speed transmission. That transmission was commonly used at that time in the GT40s, uh, Grand Prix cars, etc. So it was a natural, to, and it was available, so it was put in this car. Mm -hmm. And um, the fuel tank is here. On the other side is a large luggage compartment, and then the front is a luggage compartment as well. Let's take a look inside. Maybe look that. Can you actually get in there and I'll follow you in here? Kind of a careful fit here. Yeah, no, it's... It's comfortable. Oh yeah, it's, it's very comfortable, it's tight. Uh -huh. You know, it's because of the, it's a racing chassis and the car is very small, it's tight. It's very wide, but it's fairly tight longitudinal. Tell me what you see on the dashboard there. Well, the, the dashboard, uh, there was, when the car was first shown in Turin, uh, there was a mock-up for the instrument panel that was a very, fairly conventional theme. But they put the body then on the chassis, and the car appeared at Monte Carlo the following May. And one of the things that Di Tommaso did, he, he somehow convinced them that to drive the car around the track with Princess Grace in it. Well, then the car went back, and after that, there was a change. Uh, and I don't know how it happened if Dujaro, uh, he got Dujaro involved again. 
but they then uh, picked up all the design cues from what was going on in racing. So these gauges are the gauges used in a lot of Italian racing cars. The steering wheel, of course, was unique in its, its uh, multiple pieces. Uh, the leather for your hands and the wood and the stainless steel. Uh, classic in race car uh, uh, development were the toggle switches and a simple flat panel for all the gauges and everything you need to drive the car. So um, that part of the, uh, the car is very, the part of the car that is very unique, the fact that it is built on a racing chassis has kind of been lost in time because people focus on the way it looks. Mm -hmm. And Di Tommaso wanted to, felt that the Mangusta would be a car that would introduce people to other people who like cars but he totally misjudged how that would happen, and it's happened because of the way it looks. Hmm. Consequently, the race chassis, all of that, has kind of been forgotten. Well, congratulations, you have a, you have a stunner here, and I think you know it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, I've had it, I, I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to buy it when, uh, at that time, the way GM got rid of uh, evaluation cars, was to sell them to dealers but before they sold them to a dealer they were offered to interested employees and they had a raffle there were three of us and uh, three of us had put in our name in to buy it and i was fortunate to uh, be the one that won the chance to buy it so my wife was a little disturbed about that so but anyway we did buy it and it turned out to be a good you didn't have to do. mortgage the house to do it though pardon you didn't have to mortgage the house to do it no no almost almost <laughs> well thanks again thanks for your time okay right. thank you right.